Hi, Kara. <clears throat> Hi, Marty. How are you? I'm doing fine. How Recording are you? Recording in progress. Good, thank Hello. you. Good, thank you. Hi, Omar. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Okay. So Kara, how's the office Kira. coming? Post. And then I'll just leave it to you guys to let people in from the waiting room. All righty. Okay. Have a good uh, have a good meeting. Okay. Let me know if there are any issues. Well, thanks for letting us in. Oh, I'm still not getting share screen. You should be able to now. Okay. There you go. Great. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Rosemary. Do we have a, uh, let's see. I'm here, Dan's here. Sylvia, I didn't see yet. Kelly won't be here. She unfortunately lost her mother. So she's not here. Uh, Paul, Paul's here. Well, let me do this right. So far, Sylvia is not here. Okay, Kelly is not here. Paul is here. Steve is here. David, I didn't see yet. Lisa is here. Rosemary is here. Lewis. And Omar is here. So we have a, uh, <clears throat> a quorum and uh, I'd like to begin the meeting. It is now, my clock is COVID. So it's now 7.03. Oh, uh, Sylvia apparently can't get in. Hello, Sylvia. Uh, the other one has called me. Uh, do you have Dan's number? All right, call Dan while I start the meeting. Dan? Yep. Dan? Yep, I, I can hear you. I told Sylvia, oh, Sylvia called, okay. So here's our agenda. Uh, Approval of the October 2021 20, minutes first. Hi, then, Sylvia, I, how are you? then resolution concerning midterm elections. Then discussion of the open meetings law. And then bylaws concerning special committee memberships, if there is time. And our next meeting is Monday, December 13th. On the question of the approval of minutes, do I have uh, a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. And been seconded. Uh, is there anyone against approving the minutes? Is there anyone abstaining? Minutes are approved unanimously. That's everyone here, except for Sylvia, who's not on yet. Chair's report, there are two items I wanna to bring to your attention. Um, the first deals with some confusion that exists in our bylaws as present that uh, we can very easily correct. Uh, question, what is a quorum? Not the number, I don't wanna start that over again. <clears throat> the question is who makes up the quorum? And the quorum, according to our bylaws, has two different things. A majority of the appointed members as reading here, and then in the middle, Half of the more than half of the appointed members so far, so good. And then the last sentence a quorum consists of majority of the total membership of the committee, including public members. That's not what the other two uh, uh, citations say, nor does the section on committees. Such quorums consist of a majority of its appointed community board members. 
So the confusion comes from that last sentence, which I am recommending as a resolution, recommending that that last sentence be eliminated. Okay. And I will, if approved, we'll go through the cycle next month with the executive committee and then start the two months of, uh, of discussion and voting on it. Anyone have any point of view on this? Marty, just so I understand, you're suggesting that the sentence beginning with for a board committee be deleted? The sentence, the very last sentence, a quorum consists of majority of the total, actually that whole sentence goes for a board what committee. Sec what, what section is this, Marty? What section is this? Article four meetings. What? The, uh, the entire section? article four is meetings. Which section? I didn't put it down. I, I apparently put it down for section three of article six, but I forgot to put it down for four meetings. So if anyone wants to check on that. Marty, can I just get, I just want to clarify because I wasn't sure what your answer was. You propose deleting the sentence that begins with the words for a board committee, comma. Right there, correct. All of this. The whole sentence, okay. And the reason for deleting it is that it introduces confusion into a paragraph that deals with the board's quota. Correct. It also is the case, is it not, that a quorum of an individual committee does count public members, as in the, the people who have gone through the process of getting appointed to be a member of a committee, even though they're not an appointed board member. That's always been my understanding. Well. Wow. I want to clarify that and go to our current bylaws, Article 6 committees, and then in the middle, such quorum shall consist of majority of its appointed community board members. So the, the, the thought that you have that includes public members is inconsistent with the rest of it. I, I don't see it in the bylaws. I just, it would be helpful if we knew what section this was to read it. It's, it's, not, in, it's not in Article 4. Um, um, <clears throat> Dan, you're usually good at uh, doing two things at once. Can you look up where this is, please? I mean, I can tell you section five of article four says the presence of more than 50% of the appointed members shall constitute a quorum. That's it. The presence of more than 50% of the appointed members shall constitute a quorum. No appointed member may be present by proxy. All, all appointed members who are part of the quorum must be present. That's what it says. That that's section five of Article Four. I I I don't I don't see I don't well. If that, that it would be I would like to know what section that is to read it because you're you're right, Marty. It is uh, it's a uh, uh, contradiction. Uh, Dan, are you there? He's muted. Dan is muted. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm muted for Sylvia. Yeah, I'm looking at Article 4, Section 5 as well. Um, let me just see where you are here. Article 4, Meetings. So I'm looking for the language that you have in, in, in black lettering. And I, I don't see it yet. Well, it starts with a majority. That's what, that's how it begins. I, I don't see that language either, Mark. Not there. But I make this up. Yeah, I don't see it either. Um, I don't know where it came from, but. So we don't have to take it out because it's not there. <laughs> okay, well, let's that, table this. I mean, that was the reason I sent all this in advance. Well, maybe I didn't send this one, no. No, you didn't. Okay. Yeah. Not this section. I'm tabling this now. We'll come back to it next month. 
we have enough to talk about. Okay. Okay, next item. Um, it was alluded to at the I guess, land use meeting when Camilla pointed out, and some of us already knew, that there was a press release that the governor was signing two additions, two amendments to the open meetings law. The second one is of no consequence to us. The second one concerns uh, the uh, Metropolitan Transit Authority and posting maps before they're discussed, uh, which is fine, but again, it doesn't affect. This one does. This one says that in order for us to have resolutions placed before uh, an open meeting of the of the uh, of a committee or the board within 24 hours or at least 24 hours in advance notice, those resolutions have to be publicly displayed, shared, what have you. Uh, that's how I read this. And again, what I'm reading right here, what you're reading right here is a press release. I took the liberty on behalf of the committee to write to uh, the, what do you call it, the uh, Committee on Open Government asking for an explanation. Uh, I'll let you read it. In order to understand the answer, which I'll give you, you have to understand the question. So I'll give you a, a few moments to read what, this is my letter and a little more when you finish the top part. M Marty, I, I'm not seeing your letter. I'm just seeing- I am, in, I am in possession of the press release. That's the letter. Oh, I see, okay. I'm you the content. You don't need the uh, stationery. And then the lining in red is extra came afterward. If you're ready, I'll roll forward. Uh -huh. oh, that much more, okay. Marty, did you get answers to these questions? I certainly did. I plan to share that too. I just want you to note, I underlined, I double underlined and read this whole question of wordsmithing. Uh, Dan has indicated he has a uh, an opinion uh, from uh, from uh, Committee on Open Government. So I specifically asked this question because I want to know what happens if wordsmithing is required between the time a resolution comes up and a time it's brought before the committee. First of all, you don't have the 24 hours perhaps, but is that permissible? And this is his answer in total. So Marty, Marty, just, just to clarify, the question that I raised wasn't wordsmithing. The, the, the question raised was whether or not committee members can reach a consensus on a decision of what the committee wanted to do prior to the committee meeting, it's different. Okay, it's well, one I'll thing to that. suggest edits to a resolution. It's <laughs> another thing to agree on a decision of what, what's going to happen. So it's a different question. Well, I'm not sure yet where we're crossing hairs, but this is the response in its entirety. Yep. So as I understand this, is that a, first of all, first question is obviously that the uh, resolution coming from the floor obviously can't have 24 hour notice. Item two, if it is uh, presented at a committee or 
well, we'll say the committee level at this point, and it requires wordsmithing. And now we're going to argue over what wordsmithing is, um, so that the resolution in principle has been approved, but the what comes before the board isn't what was a is 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 what <laughs> I'll try again is what was agreed to in principle, but not the language that was uh, presented in public at the committee meeting, at the public meeting. Uh, and I love this phrase. I didn't, actually, when I wrote this letter, I had not, and I still have not, seen the actual language, but I love to the extent practicable. One of the issues that came up was that there was some problems in the board office particularly after the flood and what have you, that getting information out as quickly as one would like wasn't always possible. So the question, if that were to occur after this takes uh, effect, which I think is the 19th next week, um, have we violated Oak Meetings Law if we have not been able to get the full resolution out? As you note in my letter, I was concerned about uh, TNT and uh, Chuck's resolution, which, uh, and others I can think of that take more than one page. And so for the community to have open access to read it, or even the board to read it, um, is something of great concern. But if, if it's not possible, then the question becomes to the extent practicable. Has there been an attempt not to share it or because it was not available or some other problem that it couldn't be shared? So I bring that to your attention. It will come up a little bit later as we talk about the law itself, but I wanted to, this is the backdrop of this brand new piece. Anyone want to share any comments? I just want to say as a practical matter and the board chair, former board chairs on this committee of which there seem to be a number um, could probably weigh in. But if there is a resolution that's expected to be uh, brought up for the first time from the floor, usually that's come through exec, perhaps not always. Or if there's a res so I, I, I think it should be possible in the spirit of public notice to make that text of that resolution available in a distribution Again, subject to you know not having to send out 40 distributions before a meeting. And so members of the public and members of the board can look at the text beforehand, even if it has not yet been introduced on a sort of just in case. And even if it comes to pass that that resolution is never introduced from the floor for whatever reason, it seems to me no harm to that. But what you've done is you've allowed people to digest it beforehand. So I would suggest that that's one issue that you've raised, and I think that's a feasible solution and shouldn't violate any rules. If anything, it's extra notice or more information. And the second issue is when there's a resolution approved by committee, let's say five days before, and then the day before the board meeting, there have been efforts to modify the language. Um, the resolution may already have been circulated. I would suggest that a modified resolution showing the changes could also be circulated beforehand if they're involved enough so that they're not something that people will understand at a meeting on the fly. And again, uh, subject to being introduced uh, and moved at a meeting, but at least people would have the information in advance. I, I don't think anyone will disagree with anything you said. The only issue becomes, uh, I, I think of land use at the moment, and I think of this committee. Uh, we, we always precede by one day the board meeting. So if we were to have a resolution come forward from this meeting that we want to bring before the board tomorrow, I can't make the 24 hours. And so it becomes highly impractical to do so. And when Chuck has the, uh, uh, the, the pleasure of the board members providing for input, and I don't know what wordsmithing means, uh, and so he seeks to, uh, to an incorporate the comments made by various board members so that the, um, the resolution is more inclusive 
if his meeting is on Monday and the exec meets on Tuesday, that may not be practicable. Can, can I ask a clarification question? If I might just, just, just two points. This applies only to the full community board meeting or to all committee meetings? This requires to all public meetings. Which is a committee meeting, right? Which is right. We'll discuss what a public meeting is later on. Okay, over. but a committee meeting, it, 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 I, as you say, Marty, we don't have the language of the governor's state. So I don't know if it says only the full community board meeting. It's, it, it means a public meeting, which is all committee meetings also. Um, I'll tell I you, think I think it is next to impossible to have a resolution on every item that comes before committees 24 hours ahead of time. It would be presumptuous to have the resolution ready when we haven't heard from the public. Think, I think that just comes to mind, uh, Sylvia, and you just had a couple of SAPOs. Uh, now, you may say in years past, they've been easy, we passed them, but the fact remains they're there for the public to comment on. So how can you have a resolution approving it when you haven't even heard from the public? Or, or to make it more difficult, if you hear from the public and there have to be conditions put in, how it, it, it's impossible to have it 24 hours ahead of time. I worry more about the committees than I do about the board. I think the board, the resolutions go out. They come, they go through exec and they go out. That to me is less problematic than the committees that really are the workhorses of this board and have to listen to the public before they come to a voting conclusion. So I'm concerned about that. My second question is, uh, Laura said that we were expecting some declaratory statement or, or explanatory memorandum from the borough president's office. Did we receive that on this subject, on this subject? Do you know if we received that? My assumption at the moment is the answer is no. Okay. Uh, but I do believe I tended to short circuit it by writing my letter before waiting for it. So this uh, opinion, um, and it has a number, I believe I put the number here. No, I didn't. I'll give you the number, anyone wants it. Um, because we will make, we'll make the, uh, the, what do you call it, the, uh, the website with this number, anyone who wants to see his short answer. But, but my presumption here, and we'll go on, when we look at the law, but the, 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 the caveat here is public bodies. And I believe the committee qualifies under public body. Yeah, Anything, so do I. Mm -hmm. uh, they mm -hmm. have the crazy number of two people or more, which we'll read. Um, so the a committee is two people or more. And we'll get into quorum again later, but the um, I, I think well, I th I think we've all agreed to the word quorum as described above, but um, we'll come back to changing language later. So here, party. I mean, my sense is this: uh, to the extent practicable, language. That's a that's a quite broad mm -hmm. exception. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, could cover any number of uh, scenarios that have been uh, those that have been discussed um, among us now, as well as others we haven't talked about. I mean, I, I my, my, you know, including, I mean, Rosemary, as you say, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you about the committees, mm -hmm. um, but it seems as though that the extent, to the extent practicable, language really. You know, covers us in that sense. It's not practicable to, you know, circulate a resolution that can't be crafted until you've heard from the public, right? Good. So, anyway. Okay. Well, I'm just... I like that language also, Paul. I mean, I hope I hope we can drive a truck through it. With yeah, that. I know that I mean, you could. How, do, you could... how does one prejudge an issue? The community comes out. We have had issues where there are equal. There's equal division on both sides. Can you imagine if a committee put forward a resolution on one side of the issue or another 24 hours before? It's not. It's just not practical. So it's my hope that's their understanding too. But. Uh, Okay, enough. I'll stop. Sorry. Well, as I say at the meeting on Monday, uh, it was, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, 
can't remember her name all of a sudden. I said it before, uh, who brought up the subject that this thing came out as probably trying to give us a heads up that we have to be aware that 24 hours in advance. Well, here is the answer I've gotten of the opinion from a committee on open government. Let's hold it in the back of our minds. If the borough president comes out with something which contradicts it or expands further, we will move from there. But in the meantime, I've provided this for you. Next item. Proposed resolution to amend the bylaws. Um, now, this is a resolution I sent to you. This is a draft resolution, which I sent to you uh, two, three weeks ago. Uh, I said I would propose uh, a resolution. And this red is what I'm suggesting be added to Article 5, Section 3, Officers and Committee Chairs. Uh, we knew, we have known that if somebody with, resigns from the board or resigns from a, uh, an officer position or chair position uh, midterm, we have two months under our bylaws to fill it to uh, the second regular board meeting after the notification of the vacancy. Now, what we didn't have is a method by which to tell people the board that the position is vacant and at the same time uh, not chilling by announcing someone's name too early so that people who might be considering running will say, well, if he's running, he probably has the support. I need not run. So I suggest this and I shared it with you. I look forward to comment right now. I, may I go? I don't want to, but that's no, if go ahead. to go. Um, go ahead. Uh, I, I think there are, I think there are uh, two issues here. One is um, uh, the dates, the timing. What should the, what should the space of time be uh, within which um, the board office would be silent as to uh, putting names forward? So that, that's one question. What is the appropriate time? What is a good time? 10 days, seven days, whatever that is. But my, my second comment is I, I, um, I'm uneasy with, um, I consider this an administrative kind of an operational um, uh, issue, 10 days. What, I think this belongs, this doesn't belong in the bylaws. Um, I think it belongs in the ethical guidance manual. I think it could be changed by another uh, community board easily without going into our, con it's not a constitutional issue for us. It's an operational business type issue. And I, I just feel it, it belongs, uh, or it could be a board resolution. There are a number of things that the board does just by resolution. Um, you know, uh, one, one of my favorite is, um, Chuck Merdler's resolution from probably 11 or 12 years ago, we still follow diligently. Any money that the community board wants to spend has to come before the board, any money. That's not in our bylaws. It's not in the ethical, it was a resolution passed and we abide by it. So I would just suggest this is either a resolution or something that goes, uh, goes into the ethical guidance manual by resolution. Uh, so those are the two. This is is the day period, the ten business days. Is that good? Um, it's fine with me, but um, uh, but I, I don't think it belongs in the bylaws. Lisa, your hand was up. Yeah, yeah. Um, my point was really uh, what Rosemary just said. As we're saying here, within a week, and the idea was to give more time in between the the notice, you know, um, and when we announce it. So. I say within a week, that might be the next day, which defeats why we're doing this. Um, and actually, I agree with you know Rosemary's point that doesn't really belong here. I mean, I, I'd suggest the process guide, um, the process manual that's posted on the website with details, you know, such as five days after or whatever. Anyway, that's it. I'm not following the week thing you said. On the five days, please clarify. No, you said within a, th this reads within a week of knowledge of a death, blah, 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 blah. And the whole 
the whole idea of, of the whole issue was that we wanted to give some time uh, between the time of resignation and the announcement. <clears throat> so, you know, we should say, I think within a week is just too vague, um, right? Wasn't no, the I'm, I'm the, I don't see your point here. I accept anyone else who wants to comment, but Maybe when so. the chair is notified, usually it's a day, don't require a week. Right, but we're saying within a week. So we're, I thought that was a, caused a problem for some members of the board, uh, thinking that this would uh, uh, make people not want to step forward to put their name in if they knew that another. But it's not a week, you have 10 days following the notification, 10 okay. uh, business days. Oh, okay. So Lisa, the, oh, okay. I see. The, week, the week is just the notice of the vacancy, not- Gotcha, uh, gotcha. So I will say is Saturday Night Live, never mind. <laughs> okay. Well, this is, uh, uh, but this has never ever been an issue at all. The vacancy occurs mm -hmm. whatever is written in the resignation, not when the board office lets you know. Somebody resigns, there's a date. Somebody dies, there's a date. It's in the resignation. That's the date. Not the date that the community board office lets the rest of us know. The operative date is the actual death, resignation, or termination. That's a date certain. So, and it's not in the bylaws. It just that's it. That's the date. Yeah, I, don't I think we should deal with with uh, 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 the issue that was brought up last uh, month on. Uh, um, letting the board know who is uh, interested in the position. That to me is the issue. It's, it is not when the board, that, that, that's not the, the issue of the date is determined by the death resignation or termination. It's in the letter, it's in the email. Any other comments? Yeah, Marty, just one, I don't think the issue, you know, is so much about when we get the resignation, the resignation notice, you know, should go out right away. So folks uh -huh. know they step down uh -huh. from a position. The, uh -huh. the issue is the notice that somebody is running for the office. So I, I don't think that the, the, the problem is the notice that somebody stepped down. I mean, my, my belief is that somebody sends in a resignation, it should be sent to the board immediately. So that way all board members know right away, you mm -hmm. know, for several reasons. I think it's important to let people know right away that somebody stepped down from a certain position, et, et cetera. The, the issue presented, you know, that, that, that I, I think is important is the notice of any individuals who are interested in running. Right. And I think what we need to deal with is whether, you know, we decide that we're not going to put out any names whatsoever, or tell people that are interested and they just, you know, self-nominate at some point in time and, and the board will you'll put that out. That, that's the issue that I think we should be dealing with. Steve? Uh, just in response to what Dan and Rosemary said, I think the second sentence, I'm not saying there weren't other ways to do it, but I think the second sentence uh, accomplishes at least what I re remember being the sentiment of several members of this committee that you people didn't want to chill people being interested i think the second sentence again other there, there are probably many ways to write it but i think this sufficiently achieves that i have no problem with the first sentence i if rosemary was suggesting that this redefines vacancy i or i don't think it does at all i think it just refers to vacancy and just deals with when the notice is sent out that might fall under the category of micromanaging that i know some people <laughs> complained about with the not nominating committee uh, ethical guidance manual stuff uh, i have no problem putting all of this in an ethical guidance manual i also don't think it's terrible once you focus on this issue to put something in you know a, a first sentence as it is here uh, my sense from hearing comments is that it shouldn't say within a week of knowledge, it should say as soon as possible after learning of the death resignation or termination from the board of a blah, 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 notice should be sent to all board members or notice will be sent. I, I don't feel strongly, but I think you can write it in that way. And I hope that would take care of uh, Dan and, and Rosemary's comment. Anybody else? I don't see any other hands. Uh, just one point, uh, Rosemary. Um, 
the sentence reads, um, announcing the vacancy, the second sentence, and setting the date when such vacancy is to be filled. Uh, that date certain, as you point out, is not effective until the date is to be filled. So it's two months after it's to be filled. So if someone resigns November 1st to be effective November 30th, you can still announce it, but uh, it's two months after November. So December, January is when the election takes place. It's just, it's, it's not a problem. It never has been a problem. There's been no need to tell the community board office, you have to let people know that somebody died, resigned, or was terminated. It's never, never, ever been an issue. Uh, the it, it, sets a, it, 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 it just isn't, the, the issue is, I, I don't know, Dan, I, it, it, this, this issue was raised last month. It is, how do I, how do I say it is? It's, it's the um, announcing who's running for that office is the issue. That's the issue. Um, and and when, when should that be done? Um, the thought being, again, I think, uh, Steve, you referred to it, the thought being that if it's announced, for instance, when the, the resignation comes in, in less than 24 hours, it's announced to the board, so-and-so is running for that position. The, the, not the fear, but the concern was that that would have a chilling effect on somebody considering running for that office because the decision faced them is not simply should I should I consider running for that office? The consideration is do I want to run against Mr. Jones? That's the idea of the the, the breathing point. Just just ten days a week, whatever that space is, to allow people to consider the vacancy and consider whether they're going to run. Then go ahead and announce what you want. But less than twenty four hours. After, I, 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 it, 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 some people didn't even know there was a vacancy before somebody already announced they were running for it. That's, I think that's the issue that, that needs to be tackled here. If, and, and I think last month, I think the consensus was it should be tackled. And okay, I'll stop. It, it's and the purpose of this was supposed to be no announcement after uh, a sufficient amount of time has been allotted so that people can self-nominate. So nobody jumps the gun. Right, so it's 10, ten business days, right? That's, you, you've highlighted that. That's, that's, the, that's what's before us for consideration. It can yes? be 20 business days. I, I, it's, exactly, exactly. Whatever is, whatever people think is. I think, think it, is... it ought to be standardized so that there is no confusion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the issue I would hope at this moment is whether or not it belongs here or it belongs in ethical guidance manual. Um, I have uh, no interest in where it goes, <laughs> except I think you should go one of those two places. <laughs> Any thoughts? I'm gonna make this, uh, I oh. guess, two separate votes. One, so Marty, should, should Marty. it exist? And two, where it should exist? Is that Dan I heard? Yeah, it is. You know, look, I, I think it was Steve or, or, or Rosemary who said before ethical guidance manual and being that the rest of our election rules are there, maybe it does make sense to put them there. I mean, it we does have does a, when I said it does, it does make sense. I think that's where if, you know, that's where we put in you know, no person who's running as an officer shall be on the nominating committee, et cetera. We have fine, you know, uh, we have rules within the ethical nominate, uh, uh, I'm sorry, ethical uh, oh, yeah. guidance manual. I apologize. And there's no reason why we can't add this one to it as well with, with the other rules that we have there. Marty, I would just suggest that we, we just amend the first sentence based on the comments received so that the beginning of that first sentence reads, as soon as possible following such death, resignation, or termination from the board, comma. And then I think everything else is fine. You probably don't need the parenthetical, but, but well, actually you do because it's not gonna be in the bylaws. Okay. 
Okay, I'm spelled the word. No, nope. I'm looking for this word. Uh, recycling that word. Recycling that word. Okay, uh, this too, I am going to put off the next month where I will shift it uh, to uh, what do you call it, the, the ethical guidance manual, and we'll look at it again. Uh, Marty, uh, this... if I can just jump in with, with one question. So, looking at the second sentence, the notion would be that there, the, 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 the period for people to self nominate uh, can be expansive, uh, but uh, I, there's, you know, it ends. 10 days uh, prior to the night of the election and no names will be announced until that date. Is that right? Because I had thought it, it was gonna be the other way that we'd say you have from 10 days until the date of the, you know, the announcement of the resignate, you, you count 10 days from the, the, the announcement of the resignation or the vacancy, 10 days, that's not what we have in mind. Okay. And how would you suggest it be uh, amended? Well, I mean, I don't, I, I guess I don't feel that strongly about it, but it, it seemed to me that, uh, you know, it, it might be, you know, the, there, there's a, a, as well, you know, could be a, a, a two month period of time, you know, from- I, I think we're misunderstanding what I intended here. It's, you have two months. You have up until 10 days prior to the night of the election to announce, to self-nominate. So if the meeting were held on uh, on November 25th, whenever Thanksgiving is, you have until November 15th to make your statement, which is probably took place in maybe September when the announcement came out. Right. And so I, I guess I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting at potentially a slightly different problem which is that you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks, we won't know if anyone has stepped up. Uh, and then two weeks before or 10 days before we learn, oh, there are no names. You know, no, no one has stepped up for that position. The board office and the, and the officers will know on a continuing rolling basis who's interested. It's just that it won't be announced to the full board. The, the, the number of people, whoever has expressed interest, won't be announced to the full board until 10 business days prior to the night of the election. Okay, so what, what, is the, what are the, if, if nobody has stepped up, the officers know about that, they can't do anything about that because they don't want, you know, they, they shouldn't be in a position of letting you know, I mean, I, you know, what would they what would they do with that knowledge? Because they can't say to people, actually, no one has stepped up for this position yet. Uh, hopefully, someone will, because that would be no. this information prematurely. I don't think that's the sense of this, and I don't think that's the literal interpretation of it either, uh, Paul. I would say that number one, the first question is when. What happens at the 10 day mark or the two week mark or whatever? And I think the answer is if no one has expressed interest, the full board learns that no one has expressed interest in the position. And actually, that's so much the better because it puts everyone on notice hey, this is open. This is, you know, uh, something if you really want to think about doing the job, you sh you, there's no impediment to that. So that's, I don't think that's a problem at all. And I don't think that's a, an ambiguity. The issue you raise about what are the officer? What can the officers do between the date of the resignation or termination and the date of that notice? They'll do what they do every single time this happens, which is they scratch their heads and they try to talk with people who they think might be interested in taking it on, so that the board continues to function smoothly. That doesn't mean they predetermine the outcome of the election, but you know, <laughs> you've probably done it yourself when you were an officer. 
So I guess they 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 they, they wouldn't be allowed to they, they wouldn't be able to say no one has stepped forward, but they could encourage people to run, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just like the nominating committee can do that too. Okay. Fair, fair enough. Okay. So uh, I'm going to put that, this. In. May, may I just I, I just I God I am sorry to do this. I I just think it 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 is the intent was to flip it around entirely. It is just a gap of time at the beginning where there's silence. Just at the beginning, there's after that go say anything you want, okay? But that very beginning, ten days or two weeks, the beginning, not before before the vote. The vote is, it's not irrelevant, but it's that beginning period where people are considering. So from the announcement of the vacancy, uh, you have in 10 days, there will be silence. Just silence, okay? Consider it after 10 days, whoever wants to put their name out there and it's publicized and the office puts it out, so what? That's fine. It's that, that initial quiet period. That's yes. not what the intention was when we discussed this. Okay, Absolutely then, not. Then, not then, I, then I misunderstand entirely, Steve. Then right. I misunderstand entirely. Just so we're clear, I, I also thought what Rosemary has articulated is what I thought we were talking about. Also. Uh -huh, uh -huh, <laughs> so, uh -huh. But, well, I don't know. I've, I've, I'll say no more. Get over here. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, <laughs> i uh, finish my sentence um, for next month. I will restructure, I will recast this in the ethical guidance manual and we'll take it from there. Uh, an ethical guidance manual requires one vote by the community board as opposed to a, an amendment which requires two votes, the two right. successive right. meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure where to go with this, but I'm, uh, I'm inclined to support, but I, I shouldn't say that. I don't want to say anything. Um, there seems to be two opinions on the table at the moment, which is that it should be 10 days after the announcement, people have a chance to put their names in, or up to 10 days before the vote, people should put their names in. Is there a feeling, a strong feeling either way before I... Uh, transpose <laughs> this uh, to a different location. I'll do my understanding and every, everybody should speak, but my understanding is the initial 10 days or two weeks, whatever it is, whatever people feel that, let's say 10 days is the quiet period. Nobody jumps in 24 hours after the announcement and says, I'm running. That was the, remember all the talk about the chilling effect about people running? It had to do with the beginning, the very beginning of the vacancy. So that's, a quiet period, okay. that, that so is you, my understanding. Okay, and, that's very, okay. you've made your point. Paul okay. seems to agree uh, going Steve as is or changes the first 10 days. I think I think that the quiet period is is fine. I thought that the that the reason for the quiet period was that there should be no chilling announcements for the entire as much as long as possible, so as to give people a chance to step forward and without being you know dissuaded or intimidated. So it's not so much that it's a, the quiet is not the quiet of discussions. The quiet is don't announce that Mr. X or Miss X has 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 put their name in the ring. Don't announce that to the whole board. Hold off as long as possible on that. And the deadline for anyone to make that submission to the board saying, I'd like to run, they can do it any time in that period, but there simply won't be a board announcement during that period. That would, I mean, that's, I think, the goal of, of not dissuading people. Uh -huh. You could have a 10 day period at the beginning, uh, but the result of that could be that you have an early announcement, whether it's 10 days or two weeks, right? It's a smaller piece at the beginning. And then you do have a quicker announcement and a quicker, you know, chilling effect. That's, the, I mean, it's, it, you can do either, but you do not maximize the, <laughs> the lessening of the chill when you have an early announcement. The problem that you're gonna, I think that you'll find is if you have it the other, you turn it the other way around what you'll find is that there's an announcement 10 days in of who's running 
And then maybe other people, presumably you want to allow, allow other people past that first 10 days uh -huh. to throw uh -huh. their hat in the ring. So uh -huh. then do you have the board office making piecemeal announcements whenever someone puts their hat in the sure. ring? They yeah. keep announcing. Well, you could do that, right. but again, I don't see why that's consistent with the idea of maximizing the no chill. But can I whatever. get the census first, and we can repeat ourselves again, Sylvia? Sylvia? No, no I, I didn't uh, put my hand up. No, I'm asking everybody. Oh, oh, oh. I agree with um, uh, Rosemary and others that uh, it should not be announced uh, 20, uh, less than 24 hours and uh, there should be a uh, period uh, in between that would give others an, a full um, opportunity to uh, put in their name in for that position. I'm not sure we got the two sides clear. Rosemary is suggesting that 10 days following the notice that there is a vacancy, then we can announce a person's name. And the suggestion here is that person can self-nominate up until the point of 10 days before the election. Um, and then they have a month, month and a half to make a choice if they want to be in or not. So no name is mentioned. Do you want the 10 days after the announcement or the month and a half before the election? No, those are the same thing, Marty. <laughs> no, it's not. Rose, as far, what I understand is Rosemary says, after the 10 days, announcement is made. X wants the job. Right. And the alternative is 10 days before the election, you make that announcement. You the announcement was made December 1st. You to have until, um, let's pick a date, uh, January 15th minus 10 January 7th. Right. I'm just going to hop in here, if that's OK. Um, no, I'll ask you, please wait until I pull the committee. Got it. I'll be okay. happy to listen to you. Um, is Lisa? Yeah, well, first, I don't think that this will happen again. You know, it, you know, once we tend to discuss things and discuss problems that come up, it tends to, you know, history takes over. And uh, um, I don't know that we have to put anything formal in anymore. I think informally it will, it's fixed itself. But if we do put in something formal, I'd say in the beginning, uh, you know, it should be 10 days from, from when the uh, event happens. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <sighs> yeah, uh, yeah, because I mean, people are going to start talking about, you know, elect, we don't want a lot of politicking going on. So it's probably good that the announcement gets out sooner, rather than just before an election. So I'd say, you know, 10 days from the start. Paul? If we need to say anything. Paul? Uh, I, I'm the same. I, I'd say 10 days from the, from the announcement of the vacancy. Dan? Yeah, I agree with that. 10 days after the announcement of the vacancy to give a name. If anybody gives a name. And, and the truth is, if anybody else is interested after that, they, they could always run from the floor or announce later. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Omar? You submit the name after 10 days. Omar. Hi, Marty. I agree with the 10 days after the announcement. Okay, who didn't I get? I get. That's it. That's it. So I will say it's unanimous at this point. Everyone thinks 10 days after the announcement is made. And then an Marty, just. Just to clarify, that means that no one can submit their name to the board after 10 days after the vacancy occurs. So if, whether it's a month or a month and a half, in the ensuing 30 to 45 days, if someone wants to run, they just keep their own counsel and they wait and self-nominate from the floor 30 uh -huh. or 45 days later. 
Uh, is that right? Idea? I just want to make sure that people understand that's the mechanics. You're Wait, basically uh, setting it. You're setting a last date for self-nominating submissions to the board office of ten days after the vacancy or two weeks or whatever that is. That's not what I understood. Oh, no, no. Well, you better write this thing. In no, the way it's it's clear. before ten days. But you can keep, you know, putting your hat, you know, your name in the hat up to the election and from the floor. Now I'm thoroughly confused. The issue is, I thought that within ten days, someone, anyone, any ones, plural can identify themselves as wanting to be, uh, to fill that vacancy. And the board would then, after 10 days, announce who has put their names in. And thereafter, Marty and Steve, and maybe this clarifies it. I, I, I don't think there's any prohibition on the board office putting out further names, even if they're peaceful. Right. I don't think anybody would care. That's right. I, I think the big distinction is just don't do it less than 10 days. Give that 10 day period for people to think about it. And look, if they don't put their name in at the 10 day mark, that's fine. They could still do it at 15, 20, 35, right. whatever. Right. I don't think anybody cares if the board office is, hey, by the way, Steve is also interested in running for this vacant position, you know, and here's mm -hmm. a note. All I ask is that when you redraft it, you make that clear because the construction okay. of it now is quite the opposite. That's, okay. All. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Deborah. Um, no, I lowered my hand. Oh. <laughs> Hope I didn't frighten you away. No, I, 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 uh, my only observation is that I think it's simpler and that the rule would have the most amount of flexibility for different situations if you wrote it so that you're just creating the 10 days prior to the actual election as a space where everybody knows who's running. And that way, if somebody decided in July for some bizarre reason that they weren't going to be able to continue on as a chair, that you've got the whole summer where there's no announcement being made and that the announcement is made 10 days before, you have an unlimited amount of time where there's silence prior to that. And then you have, a, but that, at that 10 day period, everybody knows, okay, whoever's running is gonna be announced. That's all. I just thought that that was more simple, but it seems like the, the, there may be consensus going in different directions. So that's fine too. Well, thank you. Uh, again, I'm going to recast this into the uh, uh, ethical guidance manual and I will frame it as 10 days after the announcement based on the census that I took. Having said that, we have, now we can get to the real meat of the meeting. Open meetings law, I've uh, sent this list out prior to the meeting of just some of the questions that could come up while going over the open meetings law. Um, some I believe we've answered, but I wanna come back to these, hoping you've looked at them, but let's look at the law itself. Um, well, we went to this. Public body includes, going back to uh, Rosemary, includes consisting of two or more people who conduct public business. So uh, if two of us get together and talk about <laughs> um, some item that's coming up, I guess two is okay. Well, two includes. So uh, this kind of chills any conversation between board members uh, relative to an issue coming up if we took this exactly as, as written. Uh, I know when I was on the school board, uh, there were nine of us and we used to joke that if we came to a social occasion and five or more of us were there, that was a quorum and therefore we had to be careful what we said. Um, this seems to be very clear. And I say with this word chilling, that be very careful what you say to each other if there's two of you. Uh, I highlighted uh, here. Marty, Marty yes. I, I just want to make that this is contrary to what my understanding was. I mean, I, I thought it had to be a quorum of a body, you know, that, that, that is, you know, a, a, a quorum of the board 
or a quorum of a committee or a quorum of a subcommittee, not just two, two of us who happen to be shooting the breeze about what's going on at the upcoming meeting. Yeah. I think that's a public meeting when we get to a. Well, when become what becomes a public meeting? A quorum. When you get to. Okay, so I'm sorry. What you're saying, this sentence, the term is defined to include entities consisting of two or more people. Right. That is that is not referring to the how you define a meeting, but what entities are covered. Is that correct? Okay, my mistake. I, I forgive me. Go ahead. Okay, well, maybe I was too glib with this. Obviously, uh, what I now think it means is that if a meeting is held of two or more people and the first definition of a meeting, and then we come back to the question of quorum, there's no meeting unless there's a quorum. Um, two people could be a quorum if there were three members of that committee. And if they're having a conversation which would have consequence in terms of a finding of the committee, uh, then that requires public uh, involvement, public uh, observation. But let's come back to that question. Committee and subcommittees. So a quorum is required to, in order to conduct public business, which consists of two or more members performing a governmental function. So if you were, I mean, I think I would imagine you said, uh, uh, Paul, shooting the breeze and the breeze happens to be, what do you think of the homeless shelter? I don't think that constitutes a quorum necessary for the public to be part of your conversation. But I'm open for uh, the legal minds here to, uh, to correct me. This law went into effect on January 15th, 2022. No, <laughs> it shall expire and deemed repealed January, 2022. I don't know if they've acted or plan to act before then to extend it. I have to believe they would act to extend it. Our meetings have to be in an open and public manner. And the language here refers obviously more than the community board. Um, public body means any entity. Going back to uh, the question of who asked to, uh, uh, the question Rosemary asked whether it means a committee. Public body means any entity for which a quorum is required in order to conduct public business. That's a committee. Mm -hmm. And then executive session, I think at this point, we know what executive, executive sessions are. We, uh, the, the group must vote to go into executive session and must vote to come out of executive session. Uh, the public is kept out, but there are specific reasons by which you're allowed to go into executive session and far more why you're not allowed to go in. The ones we have used usually are uh, no we didn't get to that yet what am i looking for 105 okay well we we'll come later to what what qualifies as executive this uh, mm -hmm. Executive mm -hmm. session. Make all reasonable efforts to ensure the meetings are held in an appropriate facility. 
uh, frankly for us, I don't know what's going to happen on January 16th when the extension of the uh, governor's executive order expires again. Uh, we don't have a, in our own control uh, an area, um, a venue large enough to A, hold some of the crowds that we have um, um, have had, which are important that they attend, and two, uh, that it also be uh, barrier free, raises major problems for us. Um, and now we have situations in COVID where people don't want people, uh, bodies don't want uh, public into their facility and other issues would make it extremely difficult for the office to find uh, not only community board meeting sites, but committee sites. So I'm still plugging for an extension of the, uh, the Zoom or uh, denial, we'll see. You might, in order for the quorum, people who come to it must actually be there. That's the part that the executive order uh, eliminated. Um, we should need to have rules. I'm not aware that we have rules. And I want that as part of our agenda for next month to come up with rules. We have rules under certain conditions. Um, if the public wishes to speak at one of our board meetings, they have to sign up in advance and we have a limit to the number of people who can sign up. We have a time limit how long they speak. Um, our committees generally don't have rules. Um, how many people can speak over how long a period of time? Um, do, does everybody have to have an opportunity to speak? I'm not speaking in favor or against any of this, but the fact is we ought to present and offer a set of rules that each committee is, or with exceptions that we'll write into it, are bound by. So the community, community knows what to ex expect when it goes from one committee to the next. Some they can speak in and some they can't. Is that right? Is that wrong? We ought to establish meeting uh, rules. To the extent practicable, is that word again? Paul, it's, I got it again. Extent practicable and within available funds, we have to, we can broadcast our meetings. Now that's a it's entirely different than Zoom. That means uh, henceforth, we could allow, we could have our public meetings in person, but still Zoom our meetings for the public so they can watch it without actually having to be there. Public notice of time and place of meetings scheduled at least one week prior. So we've been using two weeks notifying the public that we're having a meeting. We notify the news media. We have our uh, mailing list or our distribution list. Uh, one thing we've always had a problem with is where to post it, conspicuously post it. That makes sense uh, with a town hall where everyone knows to find public notices. Uh, I have to suggest over time, we put uh, a sign of meetings coming up on our door, on our doorway. I don't know who would see it there. And certainly with the, uh, the damage done to our office, we've not had the uh, opportunity and no one would come to our office to see that. Now, I love number four, because number four has proven to me that because I can read something, doesn't mean I understand it. Uh, and this was discussed at the Borough President's Conference, I believe in August. If a video conferencing is used to conduct the meeting, the public notice for the meeting shall inform the public that video conferencing will be used. Identify the locations for the meeting and state that the public has a right to attend the meetings at any of the locations. So, if we decided that when the executive order is no longer in effect, that we wanted to zoom our meetings anyway, that's allowable under the condition that 
every single member of the board who is zoomed in and participating in the meeting must publicly announce their address so anyone in the public could come to their house if that's where they're meeting and sit in and watch you participate. Um, I think that's rather strange, but that's the interpretation of the of both the borough president and the Committee on Open Government. So if we were to press, if I were to press that we wanna have Zoom meetings, they're totally legal, so long as you wanna have company and I guess put out refreshments for all the people who are gonna show up. <clears throat> Any thoughts on this? <laughs> So you know hard. about that. You know about that snowball in hell, Marty, right? Right. <laughs> M Marty, my my uh, sense is that this section four uh, that you just referenced. I mean, this has been this is, uh, I mean, this has been the law for some time now. You know that that you know, and you know before we were doing everything by Zoom, it was. Uh, you know, other other public bodies that I belong to that had, lo you know, locate different locations. Uh, you would, you, you could video do a video conference from those different locations, but the public had to be had to be available to access each of those locations. That's referring to a different thing than a Zoom meeting mm -hmm. where people are all uh, accessing it from their homes, right? Mm -hmm. If, I don't know what bodies you're talking about, but if it's a public body as defined under this law, then you can have a Zoom meeting, but as I, I'll repeat it, every, the public must be aware of every place where someone will be watching in order to participate, and they have the right to be at that person's site to observe you, your home, whatever. What we're doing right now is allowable only under the governor's uh, uh, what do you call it? the executive order, which superseded this. Right, and 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 once that expires, then we're back to this, and the only way that we could meet on Zoom would be to treat it as a video conference, in which the public should be able to be present at every location. Right. So, which, which clearly is, is not is not going to happen. So, yeah, that's so we we have no alternative at that point but to go back to in person meetings. At or, that point, or, yes. or smaller locations. You know, if we can't get everyone in in one big room together, we could meet in three smaller rooms that are all open to the public. I mean, I'm not I'm not proposing it, but that is a way that that's something that's available, right? In theory, that's uh, yes. We can have uh, geographically dispersed uh, meeting sites where people can congregate, and public can come to any one of them and observe. Interesting uh, approach. Um, so, again, I thought I read this and it made perfect sense to me. I'm not alone. Uh, uh, Sergio also read this uh, during the summer and said, this is what it says. We're allowed to have video meetings. Oh. And the answer is, yes, you are under this condition. Okay, I've highlighted the uh, notice of time, place, and meeting given conspicuously posted. I mentioned the posting problem that we have, but it's always on our internet site. And now to conduct of executive sessions. I mean, all of these are valid reasons for an executive session. We have used F and H. Um, well, I tried to use F when it came to the question of, um, of what do you call it, the, uh, the nominating committee. I believe I also, wrote, I believe, I know, I also wrote a letter at that time to COG for clarification and the fact that I want to talk about one of you who is applying to be uh, on, the, on the nominating on the, on the slate as an officer, and we might talk about your health or 
anything that might be embarrassing to you is not does not fit under this uh, this. Um, so that's why the nominating committee must be in public and must be available to the public. But if we were talking about an employee, if we were talking about uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, disciplinary action against a member of the board, then we could go into executive session to discuss it. But any findings, even minutes, have to be public um, without mentioning names. And then as uh, Rosemary has used and as uh, Laura, uh, Laura has used uh, with the sale, lease of real property, that also goes into executive session. Minutes must be taken. We had a problem with this a couple of years ago um, where minutes were not coming in and were not being posted, but that has been resolved of late. And um, I want to say a word about minutes. When I worked for Central Board, I used to go to the Central Board of Education uh, meetings. And the agenda for those meetings was usually a phone book wide uh, because it listed contracts and contractors and, and all kinds of things of great detail. Um, but the minutes could usually be uh, printed on the back of a postcard. The minutes were very succinct. Items one through 20 passed. Item three rejected. And that was the sense of the minutes. Um, we've had a, over the years, um, people who seem to believe and want to make the minutes into transcripts. Minutes don't have to be transcripts. Item, 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 following item was discussed. This is the outcome. This was the vote. And we must record all votes. And then no one's saying, saying anything. And finally, enforcement. Um, I mean, the question then becomes if we have violated the rules or someone believes we have violated the rules, uh, court action could be initiated. Um, and the court has the right basically to overturn whatever was decided if it was found we were in violation, either of intent or it was, uh, I forgot the word again, uh, it's practicable. It wasn't practicable to do that. And we can explain that. Uh, and then this next number two is really the foil about costs associated with the use, well, attorney fees, if there are court decisions and who pays for it. Okay, I'm gonna rush through this. Okay, if a law is more restrictive, it takes uh, precedence. And the one at the end, I know nothing about law, but this is in all of them, severability. If you decide that item one is illegal, immoral, unethical, we get rid of item one, the rest of the law stands. You don't have to get rid of the entire law. So we have gone through at this point, I hope everyone is comfortable that they know what's in the law. I had these questions early on, which we may or may not want to answer, but the purpose and intent uh, is, and this is a sentence I took out of a, uh, an, a, an opinion, an advisory opinion. They have the public has the right to witness, observe, the decision-making process, um, it doesn't say they have the right to speak. But as pointed out the numerous times this evening, there are multiple times we want to encourage the public to speak. Under what conditions? 
I have said it a number of times of late, most of you do not remember, but when the Panavin Law, when the Willowbrook Consent Decree came out and the Office of uh, OMRD, the Office of um, Mental Retardation Developmental Disabilities at that time was trying to establish group homes, they were totally uh, unrestrained. They do whatever, felt they could do whatever they wanted. And they established, they planned to establish uh, the first group home. Um, I no need for me to give the address, but the community was up in arms. And as well, they should be based upon the secrecy that, that was involved. And uh, we held a public hearing. I chaired it at Mount St. Vincent and the epithets that were yelled out and the marching up and down the aisles uh, with people in, in protest and distress that they weren't allowed to speak long enough or wanted to repeat or yell or scream. Uh, I commended Omar <laughs> uh, having a, uh, a meeting on Zoom eliminates all of that. And, uh, and so I'm hoping that when we meet with the uh, Department of, uh, of uh, Homeless uh, Services, uh, they will not have gotten the impression that everyone was calm and quiet and collected when anger and hostility was brewing underneath it all. Um, so anyway, access Believe to the- me, it's there. Believe Excuse me. me? Believe me, that hostility is there. Oh, I'm not saying it's not there, but it seemed antiseptic by All the right. fact that people had to wait their turn to be turned sure. for their voices to be turned on. What is a quorum? Uh, I think we've defined that enough times not to have to deal with this again. Definition of a public meeting. I think we've discussed that. Any questions, people stop me. Floods and human error aside, I put that in my humor timetables and means of distribution of agendas and amended agendas as well as consequences for missed deadlines. Uh, I think the new item uh, uh, that's now added to the law pretty much covers this with the practicability of uh, what could and should be done. Uh, under what conditions should community speakers be allowed, solicited? We have rules that are consistently applied I called on Deborah. I have no problem doing that. Uh, my committee is small enough so that I can allow for that latitude. Most of the times or some of the times I don't do that. Um, but we need to come up with, and I'm saying that's for next month's agenda, need to come up with rules that every committee uh, has the, the opportunity to agree to or change what there should be rules that every uh, board member and every uh, public uh, person uh, is aware of. A uh, question came up, can the chair announce time limits for committee board meetings? My only time limit for this meeting is that we finish at least a half hour before tomorrow's uh, board meeting. Uh, beyond that, I don't think it, I personally don't think it's unreasonable to say we're now in a public uh, facility that gave us until 10 o'clock or 9.30 and we must be out, uh, they've established a time limit for us. So I think, I think that's reasonable, but that needs to be in the rules. Um, are there restrictions on input for resolutions and letters? Um, and I'm gonna turn to Dan because Dan, you wanna explain better now this hair between uh, wordsmithing and developing a resolution? Well, sure. You know, there, I, I didn't want to interrupt before. I mean, there are a couple other topics, you know, I'll come back to when you're done. But, you know, to the extent that we want to discuss this, yes, I, I think there's a difference between a committee or, or committee members reaching agreement on a topic or a course of action on a topic outside of, of the public in, in which or I'm sorry, outside of a public meeting in which the public has a right to observe the decision-making process. And I think that's the issue. It's one thing, and you know, I'll comment, I think Chuck is a master of this, 
Right. You know, we reach decisions in land use committee all the time. We set out a course of action and we say, we're going to ask this agency to do this, or we're going to state that our position on this particular project is this. And Chuck puts out a resolution. He states, if you have any comments about this, you know, please send it to me and, and we'll deal with it, you know, at a later time. And, and Chuck is the committee chair prior to the, the next meeting basically has the decision of the committee already and he'll choose to accept as a friendly amendment or not any suggestions put forward by any member of the board. At which point, you know, what he does and, he, and he's a master at this, you know, he'll offer up a resolution and say, you know, I'm going to substitute the, 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 the motion for some, you know, uh, uh, changes here, but that's different than a committee trying to figure out what they're going to actually do. And that's the difference. And, and there's advisory opinions on it. I had sent you one, Marty. I could certainly share it, where it deals with the right of the public to observe how it is that public officials are, are making decisions, how it is that they're, they're in the middle of that process. And that is the issue. That's the distinction. It's one thing just to change a little bit of language. It's a different to come up with an agreement of a course of action and to, and to make that decision of what they're gonna do outside of the public. And that's what the advisory opinion was, is that I had sent to you earlier. I'm sorry, I didn't read it, I didn't see it. Oh, but, uh, I could share it if you like. Uh, yeah, you wanna take over? Sure, sure. Let, let, me, let me pull it up here. Let me see, I gotta, uh, how do I stop my, Sharing, stop sharing. All I gotta do is stop share. Yeah, but my, okay, and now your co-host, you can do it? Yeah, I just gotta find it. Uh... <clears throat> okay. You guys should have a resolution in front of the screen right now. Not a resolution, I apologize. You should have an advisory opinion. We and do. I'll... Excellent. So it's dated, you know, December of 2003. It's AO 3732, but th the language, you know, has been consistent through the years regarding this, this topic on, on other advisory opinions as well. So I'll just kind of go to, you know, some of the basic you know, things that, that, you know, Robert Freeman set out here. And, you know, I have them highlighted in yellow. Um, so again, it's something that we, we spoke about before the public body, quorum of a public body. And then we have here, you know, <clears throat> one of the, uh, I guess, thoughts that they have here. You know, it's, we believe the legislature intended to include more than the mere formal act of voting or the formal execution of an official document. Every step of the decision-making process, including the decision itself, is a necessary preliminary, preliminary to formal action. Formal acts have always been matters of public record and the public has always been made aware of how its officials have voted. There'd be no need for this law if, all, if this was all the legislature intended. Obviously every thought as well as every affirmative act of a public official as it relates to and is within the scope of one's official duties is a matter of public concern the entire decision-making process that the legislature intended to affect by the enactment of the statute. We go down a little bit further and, and again, and, you know, I could send this to everybody as well, you know, and, and I'll go just a little before that. Second, there's nothing in the open meetings law that would preclude members of a public body from conferring individually by telephone, via email or email, by mail or email, sorry. However, a series of communications between individual members or telephone calls among the members which results in a collective decision, a meeting held by means of a telephone conference or series of phone calls, or a vote taken by mail or email would, in my opinion, be inconsistent with the law. And you know, this is getting at where, where, where he's going, and that's the, the ability for the public to see that decision-making process, to see that back and forth. So if members aren't agreeing in the middle of a public meeting that the public's observing on a course of action, 
the committee members can't then retire into private and come to terms on an agreement in, in private. That's what this is really getting at. And again, I'll, you know, I'll send this to all of the committee members. You know, there's more language here that you know I believe is important as well, but I think that's really getting into it. It's a series of private conversations of which is outside the public purview and coming to an agreement on a course of action outside of the public purview. And that's what this is getting at. And there's a difference between just changing words, you know, putting may instead of shall, changing, you know, some, some basic descriptions uh, within a resolution. And, and there's a difference between that and coming to the decision of what that body is going to do or what that body is asking for. Oh, my first response is I'm jealous. Uh, I mean, Freeman is no longer a member, of, uh, no longer the uh, head of this organization, but you got three pages. I got two paragraphs and short paragraphs. Um, but more to point, um, I hope Chuck doesn't mind, but using what's been going on now as an example, how could one possibly have accomplished what he has? He has. Uh, if he hadn't been in communication and getting input from various sources. Marty, let me, kept Marty up to date. let me explain, if I may. Please. We had a resolution adopted by the Land Use Committee. At the time it was adopted, before it was adopted, and I repeated it after it was adopted, I said there are provisions in here that raise a lot of questions and I want to mess around with them with your permission to go ahead and see if we can change some of the language because there were objections to saying people were mentally ill. I mean, really, no kidding. There were objections to that. Um, and so you had to try and massage the language. And I said, focus on the resolves not so much on the whereas when you vote. I didn't touch it again, except, I'm sorry, I did. I put some pieces together with your help, Rosemary's and Gelman's, um, between then and the executive committee. Um, I have attended over the course of the years, a number of messy meetings, that's a polite one. Um, but that one took the cake. Uh, everybody had their own horse to ride. Uh, what Bender wanted to add, uh, Julia wanted not to add. It was just back and forth. So it was left. We were going to take a good hard look at the language. We did that. We being... Gellman and myself, and then the vice chairs, the co-chairs also looked at him. That was sent out to the entire executive committee and the entire land use committee for them to look at and comment upon. I got a few comments, changed it, and it was sent out again today. And the statement in the cover note again was, the first order of business is going to be whether we can substitute this language, which has no effect at the moment, for the language which was adopted by the committee. If the answer to that question is no, then the committee language is all that exists, and they'll vote on that. If the answer is yes, they will debate this so that every step of the way before anything becomes at all effective has been the subject of, I believe, total transparency to anyone who wants to get into it. I can't think of any more. Dan? Oh, so... So, oh, no, I'll, I'll say, Chuck, everything you do is amazing. Like, you know, what you're doing is absolutely above boards every way through. And like I said, you're a master at it because you're not changing the, 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 the decision made by the committee. 
There's nothing you did that changed what the committee asked you to do. We all said the be it resolves are, are, are here. The, 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 the sentiment, the intent, the, the direction, the order of the be it resolves you know, there. And, and even at exec, the executive committee discusses this resolution. They offer suggestions, right? And it's incumbent upon the committee chair to say, you know what, I, I might do a substitute motion. I might not based upon the suggestions that, that I'm receiving. So let me but make- But there's a difference between a committee point. outside- Dan, Dan yep. let me make a point. Yep. You've touched on something. Yep. There were and are two proposed changes that were sought to be added by members of the executive committee, indeed officers in both cases, of language in the resolutions. I said, ah, ain't gonna happen. You take that up with amendments or substitute resolution, isn't gonna happen in what I'm presenting to the board. Um, and that's the only way you can do it. Look, I don't think the law is a complete ass, close, but not quite. But it seems to me that if you are transparent or at least make a bona fide effort, uh, we should be okay. Yep. Chuck, I'll add one more thing. Everything you do with these suggestions, right? You're all bringing them right back to the board. The, the, the committee's not taking action based upon something in private outside of the public. Correct. Dan, I, um, I'm having trouble with the transition from your previous thoughts versus what's taking place right now. Um, I'm looking, oh, so. by the way, before I call on Deborah, I'm looking at the uh, second paragraph of the uh, page three that we're looking at, where obviously here, the issue was the town's policy concerning tax assessment. Okay, irrelevant. There was no physical gathering, but four members of five member board discussed the issue in a series of telephone calls. As a result, a quorum of members of the board were present. Well, that's not the issue here with Chuck either. They, not. they were not, there was no quorum involved. There was no right. telephone conference involved. So I want to keep that in mind as I turn to Deborah and then we'll, we'll go beyond that. Deborah? Yeah, I just wanted to, so as the, as the example that Dan uses of how not to do this, um, I thought I would just raise the details because I don't, I didn't raise um, Chuck as an example um, at, the, at the earlier meeting because I think that what Chuck is doing is wrong. I totally agree that um, as long as there's transparency, as long as the committee is part of the process, and as long as the public is aware of what's happening, then you, I think you've satisfied the law. And that in the case with the Dan objected to uh, the Traffic and Transportation Committee uh, meeting in September, the issue was that um, the, the committee was meeting to discuss a, a matter where there was a, a agreement about what the action was, which was to send a letter as a member, of, as the committee. I did not have anything prepared in advance because it was the very first meeting um, of the year and because it was very first meeting, my very first meeting as the chair and because we hadn't discussed the Cape Palisade issue in committee in the year that I had been on the committee. So I did not have anything to prepare um, and so um, were prepared in advance. So when it came time to put the letter together that during this uh, meeting where we were already several over an hour into it because it was part of the hearing on the flooding of the Deegan that um, I thought it made sense to instead of from scratch wordsmithing um, uh, a letter uh, with all of these issues that I said to the committee that I would, that I heard them, I understood what the issues were, that we were in agreement, that we were going to um, send a letter in, in, in favor and supporting the folks at Palisade KPOC, and that we, I would put something together. And that if we were unable, and that I would circulate to the committee, and if we were in, a, in agreement, consensus, we would send it, and if we were not, that we would um, come back to the October meeting if we couldn't, you know, if there was if there was too much space, um, if it wasn't true, what what I was hoping uh, was true that um, we were all on the same page. As it happened, uh, I put the put a draft together. I sent it to the committee. Um, one of the members of the committee gave it to Dan, and then we he had objections to the process. 
And so we brought it back to the October meeting um, and ended up doing a resolution instead. But there was never any change in what we what the action was, which was to send a, a, a resolution or a letter to the to the DOT supporting the 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 folks who live in Palisade Kapok from stormwater flooding. So the as I understand it, the because there was no change in what we were going to be doing, there was no additional discussion that was going to be that was being had. It was really just trying to find consensus, like to find the not consensus, but the kind of putting the language all together, which is what we ended up doing. We ended up kind of adding this clause and taking out that clause until we had something that everybody could kind of live with. Um, so I think of that as kind of what the norm is of the committee. So if that is not the case, I would love to understand what the nuance is between these, because I think that it's very much in the same spirit of what, what Chuck is doing, of trying to, uh, of setting forth a course of what's going to happen and then nuancing um, the, the, the whereas and the kind of the, the overall idea of, of where you're coming from, getting that, that information from the discussion and then having a, a therefore be it resolved that is, um, that is everybody feels good about and agrees to. So Marty, if I can just add a couple of things, you know, Deb, I wasn't gonna raise the traffic meeting tonight in, in, you know, in specifics. That's why I've kind of been keeping it at, at very general and I've just been using kind of Chuck as a broad example, not even going into anything specific with him. Um, just broadly saying that he, he's really good at these. Um, what I'll say is this, Deb, and, and the issue that I had just, and I hope this, you know, makes it a little bit clearer. And you kind of said it or alluded to it here. You agreed on a letter, fine. But what you guys didn't agree to at the meeting was what the letter would ask the agency to do. And three of five members at that meeting stated one course of action and two members at that meeting stated another course of action. And it was then stated that, you know, we're gonna, you know, try to reach consensus outside of the public. And if we reach consensus, we'll send that letter out. If we don't reach consensus, then we'll come back to the committee and we'll do this in public at that point. And that was the problem that I had. You know, just agreeing to send a letter is really nothing. It's what is that letter going to ask that agency to do? That's what the public has a right to see and observe. And that's the difference here. You know, just, I, I hope that clarifies it a little bit. Let's move on, Rosemary. Unmute, but unmute. I'm getting good at this. Unmute, mute, unmute. Um, I, it, let, let me just raise, um, I, I didn't think this issue would come up tonight either, but I was present at that meeting and uh, I will, uh, uh, in total transparency, I was on the working group that dealt with that community on Palisade KPOC. I feel, uh, I confess, I feel very strongly in favor of how these people uh, were abused by DOT. And I feel very strongly that we as a community board should support them in trying to rectify it. Put all of that aside. This meeting was on that particular issue. And what I heard, what I heard at that meeting was three members, I don't wanna name them, three members of the committee said, we back the community, rip up that concrete. That's what we stand for. Two members of the committee said, I don't think that, that it should be ripped up. I think DEP should put in new pipes or something, like another, another solution entirely. So three members said, uh, we support the community, rip it up. Two said, we don't. It is at that point that the discussion went into a letter let's bring this outside the meeting, we'll discuss, we'll come up with a letter. If there had been a vote, the vote would have been clear, three to two, rip up the concrete. But instead, it went into this letter, the outside, we'll, we'll come and see if we can come up with a consensus outside of the meeting. That single thing is the problem. That's the problem. And All the right, people if the I may, are furious over it. So that that's the issue. It was going to be decided outside of the meeting. Okay. So, so the, 
so it's, I just would like to. I just want to clarify. I just want to clarify one one thing of what Rosemary said. Just one thing, which no, is no, that. Hold on a second, um, please. Hold on a second. The issue. Uh, we're not going to relive the. the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the COT meeting. The issue here is open meetings law. Was it followed? Was a mistake made? Did we learn from the mistake? If there was a mistake, to me, that's the issue. I have right, no yeah, room yeah. in my apartment for concrete. Yeah, no, I, that, that wasn't the, I don't want to relitigate the whole thing. But I do want to say that I don't, I disagree with Rosemary and, and good people can disagree that I don't think it was a different action. That I think that um, the, the thing that does not make it a violation of open meetings law in my mind or when we were doing it was that we were, that one, that yes, there were three people who said tear up the concrete. And there were two people who said, maybe we should have the letter focus more on this other thing, which is just saying, you know, stormwater runoff as a focus on the stormwater runoff instead of on the solution. Uh, okay, so the, well, the, the idea was to find the middle ground. We're yeah, the idea was to find, so both ended up being in the solution in the end. That's all I'm saying. The issue is, as Dan phrased, is whether or not a decision to write the letter which did or did not represent a vote of the committee is part of the question. And the so-called wordsmithing, a word I never used in my life before, the wordsmithing um, by committee members over the course of the month to come back to the following meeting, was there a violation? And if there was a violation, what did we, what do we as a board learn from that so that uh, I mean, frankly, I'm having trouble because Chuck did a magnificent job, as he always does. But the board, uh, the committee of the board was not involved in the discussion and there was no discussion. It was Chuck who was, who was the, uh, the gatekeeper for what went in or out of the resolution. Um, to me, it made perfect sense. And the resolution he's come up with makes perfect sense. And it's the input of more than just one person, which also makes perfect sense. So I see, um, I see that a process that Dan is complaining about, in fact, worked when Chuck did it, and it does work. And we need to find to fine tune so that there's no concern in the future that somehow something was done that the public was not totally aware of. Well, well, Marty, I think look, one of the distinctions is the fact that you know a consensus was reached outside of the committee, and it was not even going to come back to the public to see and and, and to discuss and for the public to see that okay, decision. The, the bottom was, line to that okay. is, of course, that you made the issue. The issue was discussed on many levels, mm -hmm. and that letter was withdrawn, never sent, and the resolution that came out of the committee in October was the one that went forward. Mm -hmm. Steve? Well, I just wanted to say that there are two situations that I've encountered, and there are probably more, when... Uh, <laughs> work has to be done outside of a public committee meeting. For example, um, any resolution apart from a few sentences is something which is often gonna have to be prepared in advance. Very often chairs take on that responsibility. Um, it's sometimes done after a vote on a subject, but it's the more complex the subject, the more necessary it is for people to actually see things on paper before they discuss and vote. And sometimes a draft will be uh, amended, dealt with, reversed, turned upside down in the course of a meeting. Wow, yeah, but the work has often to be done in advance. Now, committees of, of different sorts in government have staffs that do this between meetings. They generate drafts, they generate resolutions. We don't have staffs, we just have ourselves. So we're both the quorum and the worker bees. So I think that there's a, if you plan a forum, and you make a list of things to do and you go out and execute on those, that there's a tremendous number of things that have to be done that can't possibly be done during the one hour, two hour committee meeting once a month, if you're gonna hold a, a CB8 sponsored forum. Um, so that's one example of things that I think are gonna happen outside the public view. Um, 
and this necessarily must in order for the committee to do its business, for the board to do its business. The second situation is what happens between two meetings when there are certain deadlines that need to be met, letter needs to go out, like notifying the board of people who are have put their names in, or, or there's a gray area about you know, the deadline for submitting names, nominating committees, most recent situation I had involving Dan and Omar and Sylvia, um, Paul, uh, where things had to be decided. You could, decide, you could consider them ministerial, uh, but a letter wasn't discussed at a meeting. And then all of a sudden between two meetings, uh, a deadline occurred, something had to happen. And the committee members discussed it either seriatim through email or different conversations here and there. It was impossible for that to happen at the next meeting. Um, so I just, maybe all I'm saying is that the, uh, the perfect uh, perfection is the enemy of the, whatever that expression is. But I just think there has to be a recognition that a tremendous amount of work needs to be accomplished outside of uh, public meetings and hopefully not final decisions on anything, but a lot of implementation and a lot of preparation, research and drafting needs to happen outside of committee meeting. Maybe I'm stating the obvious, sorry, thanks. You raise a very important issue I'd forgotten about. Uh, how many times have we asked the city for, uh, for, for items that in, in process and they give us the answer that it's a document in, in, in process in construction and refuse to share it? Um, are they public bodies? Are the people who represent them part of public bodies? Raise an interesting question. Dan, I don't know if we've solved your problem or mine, but basically I believe uh, we've touched on it enough so that there are, so going moving forward, we have guidelines to work from. And by the way, as I say next month, we'll come back and discuss actual committee rules, which we'll promulgate. Any thoughts, yeah. any comments? Uh, on this, I, look, uh, again, for us to be as transparent as possible, particularly involving decisions. And I, Steve, I agree, you know, over the years, there's so much work that has to be done prior to a meeting, but it's different in doing prep work or, or making ministerial decisions than from making a decision that's gonna affect the public and putting that out without the public seeing that decision-making process. Um, and look, I think the conversation is helpful at the very least, even if we haven't solved anything, I think it's good to put it out so folks can think about these issues. Um, that being said, look, I, I think another part of it and, you know, rules about committees and public speaking, the one thing that we do have to stress is that the public must be treated equally. And that's the one non-negotiable that, you know, we'll have to put into anything that we put out there. Um, it is now nine o'clock. Um, the only other issue, uh, unless you want to continue this conversation, the only other issue is the one that Camila brought up and she's not here. And I said, if there were time, we'd discuss it. And I'm laying that over for next month. So uh, anybody else want to talk about this or anything else? New business, old business? Rosemary business? No, no, Marty, it's just the, I think the issue that Camelia raised, um, uh, again, is, is Julia Reyes still on the call? I saw that she had joined this, Julia, Julia is still here. Um, and and, and uh, not that I'm pulling you out intentionally, I apologize if I'm doing that, but I did attend the last uh, SCREE committee and uh, there were, um, uh, uh, statements and questions about, uh, you know, Jill Towns has, has left the board. Um, uh, very sorry to hear that. Very, very sorry to hear that. But uh, she was the chair of that committee and uh, Margaret Della filled in, uh, facilitated uh, uh, the last meeting. And there was some discussion, I, I know I'm gonna flub it up, but some discussion about we're going to need another another member. We're going. To, how do you do that when you're a special committee? How do you do that when you're a special committee? I I, I think um, this was laid over from last month. I, I think we owe that committee at least 
some direction as to what they can do, what, what it's, it's able to do. They are now left without a chair, they're down a member, and um, they were inquiring about uh, how, how can they, um, you know, build up their membership, get new members. They have no idea because of this question of what does happen with special committees. Julie, I'm, I'm sorry if I dragged you into this. That's, that's okay, Rosemary. Um, I'll, just, I'll just do a slight correction. The committee as a whole didn't have a question on how do we add more people because I think five people is sufficient. I mm -hmm. think special because we're a special committee, we're not a regular committee. Correct. And, and, and my comment at the time was that um, we thankfully have community members that attend and mm -hmm. they're able to speak at our committees, which is great. Um, I don't I don't recall that the committee wanted to add extra people. Um, as a matter of fact, when the committee was formed, I believe special committees usually are smaller so that we have more than the norm. And also we've had quite a few people in and out of, out of the committees. So personally, I think five is good. It's an odd number. If we have six, then we'll be at a deadlock. And whatever we discuss and whatever we vote on, it's brought to the full board. It's not as if though we can make any, any permanent decisions. We have to bring everything to the board. Again, I sat through the meeting and I heard concern about how do we get how do we how do we get new members in? Uh, again, that's what I heard. Well, I know that I'm was, not saying there was a, yeah. a resolution of the committee or anything. And this has been an issue that Camelia has raised. And I did hear some concern, a sentence to a paragraph, whatever, uh, fr from the committee. What? Uh -huh. Camilla, there, were only, there were only three committee members there that night, so. Mm -hmm. It was yes. raised at the September meeting and I told Camelia I would put it on our October meeting. I put it on our November agenda if there were time, but we definitely will discuss it. It's an issue for our December meeting. And I'd like to leave it at that at the moment. No, it's, it, it's fine with me. I only I only say because I heard a level of concern at Scree that um, um, I, I, I'm so glad you're here, Julia, to correct. How am I? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> at the level, there are three members and I don't, if anyone made any mention slightly towards it, it, it would have been Margaret and I don't recall, but mm -hmm. definitely not I uh, and not Bob. So, and there were only three of us there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so it's now it's nine o'clock, eight fifty-nine. If there's a motion to adjourn, I will uh, entertain it. So moved. <laughs> Someone on the committee has to do it. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Anybody on the committee want to move uh, to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Made. Second, second. second. Yeah. And seconded. Anyone against uh, can stay on as long as they'd like. Other than that, thank you for joining me this evening, joining us this evening. And uh, I thought this was a productive meeting. We may not have made to change the world, but we I think we all have learned something. Um, so thank you, Marty. Have a nice evening. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you, Marty. Good night, all. Good night, have a good night. Good night. Good night.